Hello everyone. Uh, we are continuing <coughs> our discussion on um, functional programming. Uh, previously we have uh, talked about the foundation of uh, uh, functional programming, the theoretical foundation which is lambda calculus. Then we uh, talked about uh, scheme which is a dialect of Lisp and scheme is a untyped functional language. And now today we'll start our discussion on the programming language SML, which is a typed functional programming language. So uh, SML, the abbreviation SML stands for standard ML, where ML stands for meta language. And let's briefly just uh, look at what Wikipedia says. Uh, here it says that standard ML is a general purpose modular functional programming language with compiled time type checking and type inference. So it's modular, it actually uh, has module uh, 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 properties uh, where one can build abstract data types using modules like classes in, in conventional object-oriented languages. Uh, it's functional. Uh, the type checking is carried out at compile time, so it's a typed language. And it also has type inference, and this is something that we will see later. It can infer the types of expressions from uh, components, uh, from sub-components of the expressions. Uh, it is popular among compiler writers and programming language researchers, as well as in the development of theorem provers. So, I'm not going to go th through in, in any more detail here what it says on, on Wikipedia. You can you can read that uh, yourself. Now, the textbook that we're using does not contain a, a, a separate section on standard ML. The discussion on, on functional programming actually uh, uses ML syntax, so you should already be fam familiar with the, with part of the syntax. But uh, I'm pointing you here to uh, a special uh, book, which is available free on on the net, uh, which is called Programming in Standard ML by Robert Harper at Carnegie Mellon. And this is a, a, a very thorough book with almost 300 pages, with overview, information about the core language, the types, the declarations, functions, <coughs> and so on. Uh, the module, how you build modules in the language, and a separate chapter on programming techniques. So there's a lot of material here that you can use when uh, uh, familiar yourself with uh, uh, the standard ML. Now, you need to download an interpreter, and by the way, SML is an interpreted language. You need to download the interpreter, and you can do that here at the smlnj.org, where SML stands for, uh, the SMLNJ, where the NJ stands for New Jersey. Uh, this is, uh, here it says, Standard ML of New Jersey is a compiler for the Standard ML 97 programming language, with associated libraries, tools, and documentation. Uh, SML New Jersey is free and open source. And the current release is 110.75. So, for example, if you're downloading this for Windows, you can use the Windows MSI installer by just uh, clicking on here. Um, And if you're do, uh, doing this for, say, Linux, you can do something like uh, apt-get uh, install smlnj, I think it is. So let's assume now that you have already downloaded sml and you have selected typical during the install. And that means that in order to run it, you can either run the... Uh, the SML bat file, which uh, will be in the bin directory of the installation, 
or just simply run it from the menu. Here I have SML of New Jersey and I run it and I get a common prompt uh, and now the interpreter is just waiting for an input. So if I want to load a program into the interpreter I use the keyword use and then in quotes the path to the program. Uh, and just to, to quit I just do control set or of course I can just uh, close uh, the, the command uh, window here. Okay so let's start by discussing uh, standard ML versus scheme. So we have already talked about scheme which uh, as I said earlier is a, is a dialect of Lisp and uh, scheme uses uh, prefix syntax the function or the operation to be perf performed this always uh, comes first and then the operands so in scheme you would do something like plus which is a function call two and then the two is the first argument to plus and then the second argument to plus is the result of applying uh, the multiplication function to the arguments three and four um, the syntax in ML is, is more conventional in the sense that it uses uh, infix. So uh, in ML we would do 2 plus 3 times 4. Infix uh, uh, syntax, infix form. So since this is an interpreter I should be able to do type this directly into the interpreter and notice that I, I typed the semicolon at the end of the expression. So 2 plus 3 times 4 is uh, 12. That's what the interpreter get, uh, returns. It says that it, which is uh, basically referring to the expression that I typed in, the value of it is 14 and it tells me that the uh, value of the expression is of the type integer. Here we can see part of the type inference uh, functionality of the language. Notice that I haven't uh, specified uh, myself what the type of the expression here is, but the uh, ML infers the type. So if I do something like 2.0 uh, plus 3 times 4.0, now you can see that the value is 14.0 and now it's a real it's a real value. So again the type inference functionality uh, infers the type of the expression from the individual components of the expression. Because I'm, I typed in real values and did some arithmetic operations on those then ML infers that the resulting type is a real as well. So ML has uh, type declarations, even though I didn't use any types myself in the expression that I showed. It uses type infer inference as we, as we saw. It is strongly typed, meaning that the type of every name and expression can be determined at compile time. There is, there is no dynamic typing as uh, uh, in, in languages, let's say, as, as Python where the type of a variable is, is deduced at runtime depending on the type of the expression assigned to the variable. Every type here of an expression or a name can be determined at compile time, so it's a typed language. Uh, scheme on the other hand is in fact typeless. Well it has, scheme really has just lists and uh, atoms. That's, those are all the, the only types then we can put whatever types we want into those, into, into those lists. And uh, remember in Scheme when we were defining uh, names with some values we never uh, had to give the type. Now and <coughs> the last point here is that uh, ML has exception handling and a module facility to, to create uh, abstract data types. This is actually something that we will uh, not have time to go into, 
but if you're interested you can you look it up in the documentation how you do exception handling and how you create modules now remember from our discussion on scheme uh, that uh, scheme is a dialect of lisp and lisp stands for list processing and this is common for many of the functional programming languages that the basic uh, data types are lists and uh, a lot of things that one's, one is uh, carrying out in in functional programming is manipulating lists so lists in, in ml are a sequence of zero or more elements of the same type not of different types as we were able to do in in uh, scheme it ha uh, we have to put the same type into those lists we surround the list by by brackets with comma betweens so for example we can do one two three with comma and semicolon at the end and what do i get back well ml infers from the types that i put into the list that this is a integer list this is a list of integers now if i do this john and mary now i have a string list and this is the empty list brackets open bracket closes nothing in between it's a it's a um, empty list and uh, here notice that uh, uh, ml says a list it's a list here a stands for really some type notice that because i didn't put any elements into it uh, ml cannot deduce what types what type of list it is but it says it's a list of some type so the the, the quote a stands for some type here now a list is, is either empty that means it's uh, uh, bracket opens and bracket closes immediately that's really the nil list or it's of the form a double colon y now what is this this is a special pattern which means that a is the head of the list and y is the tail so the list that contains only the element seven is actually then equal to the to seven double colon uh, empty list so if I type in seven double colon empty list I get the list that contains only seven and one can think of it this way that I can break up this list seven using this pattern here into the hat which is only a single element uh, the element 7 and then the tail which is uh, the empty list so this would be uh, similar to uh, car and coulter in, uh, in uh, scheme now since uh, lists are one of the basic elements of the language we need some uh, list operations and we can uh, use null of x to check if a list is uh, empty uh, hd of x is uh, used to return the head of the list tl for tail returns the tail of the list and this is really a constructor as we saw earlier a double colon x which this is similar like cons in lisp this constructs a list with hat a and uh, tail x so i can do something like hat of one two three gives me the first element the hat um, the tail of the same list is the list that contains the element two three remember and this is an important uh, uh, thing that the hat of a list is, is always um, an element where the element actually could be a list but in this case 
the hat is a single element one, whereas the tail of the list is the um, uh, is a list containing the elements uh, two and and three. And uh, for using the constructor, as an, as an example of using the constructor, I can do something like this. One, double colon, two, three. Basically then I'm constructing a list from uh, a single element and a list. So the hat is then one and the tail is two, three. And I get back the list one, two, three. So, functions now. Of course, functions are, are very important in the language because we're talking about a functional programming language. And this is the syntax used. We use the keyword fun, then the name of the function, the, and then the formal parameters, then the equal sign and the body of the function. So, here is an example, fun successor n, which is the formal parameter, equal to n plus 1. So let's try this. Fun successor is the name of the function, n is the formal parameter, then I have an equal sign, and then the body, n plus 1. And what does it tell me here? It tells The interpreter tells me that uh, successor is a function, fn, stands for function, and here we, ha we have the type of the function. And what does this mean? This means that it's a function that maps an integer to an integer. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because the formal parameter is n, and what do I get back? Well, n incremented by 1. So, and notice here that I haven't specified the type of the, of the uh, formal parameter. Once again, the type inference uh, functionality comes into play. Uh, ML infers that n is an integer because uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm uh, applying an operation on it, which is plus, and uh, I'm adding the constant 1 to it, which is an integer. So I must be applying plus to an integer value then. And since n is an integer, uh, then uh, it's obvious that we're returning an integer as well. So if I want to call this function, I just I can say successor of uh, uh, two or three, or I can say successor without the parenthesis. Successor of three gives me the same. Uh, if I have an expression like f g of x, then that's the same as f of g of x. What does this mean? Well, it means that function calls are left associative. Left associative function calls. So I apply uh, first f to g, and then the result of that is a, is a, uh, is applied to the result of, of uh, f of g. Uh, 